Hello, this is Greg the Rural Economist, and this is Wild Edibles number 32. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about spider wart. But before we, that, we do that, we got to do the disclaimer. A lot of things out there are good to eat, good for you. Some of them taste great. A lot of others, they're not. Some can make you very sick and some can kill you. We're also going to be talking about some medicinal benefits. So I got to do the additional disclaimer. I am not an herbalist nor a physician. I do not diagnose or treat any illness. If you have something that's going on, please seek the medical advice of a certified herbalist or a doctor before you start any course of treatments. With that, let's talk about spiderwort. Spiderwort is indigenous to the United States. There are 70 different varieties of spiderwort. The one that we're looking at today is Tre Tradesicantia fluminensis. Tradesicantia no, Tradescent fluminensis. Now, we're in a heavy wooded area. You may remember in the common day flower episode, I said that common day flower a lot of times is confused with spiderwort. You will see why. Their, their petals on their flowers are somewhat similar. The blades are somewhat similar. The blades on the common day flower tend to be a little wider and shorter. And this one, the uh, day flower has two petals. This has three and it has the bright yellow pestles on the flower. It tends to grow in clumps. Now, the leaves are edible raw. Hmm. Another one that kind of has a green beanie kind of flower. Okay. The flowers can be used on a salad to spruce up a salad when they go to seed they produce like a, a little seed those seeds can be roasted and then powdered and added to stuff for a little extra kick um, the stems can be steamed and cooked so the dried flowers can also be powdered and used uh, they have been used uh, again the dried flowers have been powdered and used for a snuff to help stop nosebleeds, okay? It's been used for hundreds of years, especially by the Native American people. There's actually a big push on this plant learning more about it. It can be used to make a poultice to help treat wounds and actually, believe it or not, is supposed to be really good at helping treat hemorrhoids. It's also used internally as an anti-diarrheal and as an analgesic. In other words, a, a painkiller. Plus, there's a whole bunch of others. I mean, it's used as an expectorant, a sedative, and a whole bunch more. The, uh, they, they take the leaves and the flowers, dry them, and then make a tea. And it is actually supposed to help increase breast milk production for lactating moms. So this one's a good one to know. Like I said, there are 50, no, 70 different varieties of this plant. They're all over the United States, predominantly the Eastern United States, and then there are a few related varieties scattered around the world. This one's one, make sure of what you're talking about. Here in the U.S., there are no toxic lookalikes since the one that looks most closely to it is the day flower and it is also edible. If you would like a PDF with photos and information about how to use this thing and everything like that, we're going to be rolling out a store soon where you can buy PDFs on individual plants and the whole group as a whole. Look for a link in the video coming soon. This is Greg the Rural Economist, and step by step, we're bringing rural back. Bye-bye.